welcome Family Affairs contributor back, Dr. Dan Gottlieb. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. Dr. Gottlieb, we've been talking about your new book because it's just so wonderful and it's chock full with great information. The wisdom we're born with, restoring our faith in ourselves. I was reading the book and we were talking about, and you and I were having a conversation, that there was a study that had been done about how the simple act of caring has actually expanded the lives of elderly. And you were saying how the act of caring, how it impacted your life. And I was wondering if you could share your experiences with our audience today. I, yeah, I'd like to tell both stories. Okay. And, and here's what got me thinking about caring. It was right after my accident. And I mean, I was beyond depressed. All I wanted to do was close my eyes and just not wake up. That was my deepest wish. And, and all these people were caring for me emotionally. You know, they cared about me. They were trying to tell me, promise the future won't be so bad. Didn't help. I mean, the, the more they did that, the more alone and isolated I felt. Because you felt that they didn't understand what you were going through? And they didn't care to. They didn't care to. Now, they might have, but it just felt they were keeping their distance. Um, and, and just coming out of their own anxiety. You know, mm -hmm. I want you to feel better. I want you to feel better. I don't want you to feel better. So they wouldn't feel the pain of feeling that. Yeah, and it's not selfish. It's what we do. Right. We all do that. So there was one night I was taken back to ICU. And there I lay with catheters and IVs and, you know, I had a brace on my head and chest that was bolted into my head that immobilized my broken neck. I'm just laying there with this fervent wish to please, I don't want to make it. I don't want to make it. And a nurse came up to me. I couldn't even turn my head to see her face because I was immobile. And she said, you're a psychologist, aren't you? And I said, yeah. And I, why, I'm wondering. And she said, do you mind if I talk to you a little bit about my life when my shift is over? And I said, yeah, of course. Yeah, you are lying in a neck brace, and she wants to get some free therapy. So I said, yeah, of course. I mean, it's not like mine calendar was filled. Right. So she comes back. She tells me of a recent loss in her life, a significant one, and her despair and how alone she felt, which is exactly what I was feeling in the world. And she didn't care that I was paralyzed. She didn't care about anything. She was just asking something of me. And I got it. I got what she was feeling. And she knew it. And at the end, I recommended she see a therapist. And she thanked me and said it was helpful. I didn't say much, you know. And when she left, I closed my eyes. And I said, I can live with this. I can live with this. Because someone asked something of me. I was able to help someone else. You know, Martin Seligman, who wrote the, uh, the Bible on positive psychology, and, and his first book about depression was about learned helplessness. And, you know, I had to talk with him, and we talked about possibly writing a book together called Learned Helpfulness. What caring does for us as humans, how it changes our physiology. It changes our physiology. It's not only when we're able to care for people, but it's also when people are caring for us. 
more, more so, more so are caring. For, for other others. people. In this world, in this Western world, how hard is it to say, please help me? Yeah. How hard is it to say, please hold me, I'm scared, I'm confused? You can't, right? it's hard. Definitely. But when we can open our hearts to others, it changes everything. It changes everything. So for all of our audience members out there who are going through difficult periods in their life, what message would you leave them with as it relates to caring? Well, two messages. One, the most important is self-compassion, that when you are suffering, when you feel disease, two words, dis-ease, could be anger, could be anxiety, could be loneliness, you need care and compassion. The same I showed that nurse, the same you would show me and I would show you. When you suffer like that, you need compassion and you need it from yourself. When you suffer, your heart's closed. You can feel it in your viscera. Your body is tense right around your chest. You feel it in your throat and your stomach. It's a bodily sensation. And you need care and kindness. So take this hand that holds someone you love, this hand that's capable of loving someone. Hold it on your heart. Just hold the heart of this good person who suffers. You can't fix it, you can't change it, but you can feel kind and loving towards that suffering heart. And then take that and do it with someone else someone who suffers, hold them, not literally, emotionally. Feel your hand on their heart. Feel their life. Best way to honor someone is to say, what's it like to be you? And try to feel what it feels like to live inside their skin. It's the greatest act of love you can do for anyone. Excellent. Thank you. That was excellent. Pleasure.